Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our worship service here at Emmanuel McCann. We welcome our visitors and those who are joining us on our recorded service. Uh, blessed Reformation Sunday to all of you. And we have a special service for us as dear children ask their dear father. Uh, it's a service that focuses on the Lord's Prayer and Luther's explanation of the address, the conclusion, and the seven petitions. May God be praised and may be blessed. Of course, we have to begin with our Reformation hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. You'll find that in the hymnal or on the screen, hymn number 864. <laughs>
We read responsibly the psalm on which that hymn is based, Psalm 46. The mighty Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. God is our refuge and strength. And our presence of the soul. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though the waters roar and foam, and the mountains break with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. You are the Messiah, our Son, holy and fortress. Amen. We pray. Gracious Lord, our refuge and strength, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in all temptations. Defend them against all their enemies. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with, with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And our fire sings, uh, Redeemer, Rock, and Rep.
Thank you, choir. Beautiful song that they'll also sing in town at our 10 o'clock service. Our scripture reading is Romans 3, verses 19 to 26. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. But now, righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice at the present time, so as to be just, and the one who justifies those have faith in Jesus. What then becomes of our pride? It is excluded. How? By way of works? No, no by the way of faith. We are convinced that a person is righteous by faith, apart from works described by the law. Hallelujah. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Hallelujah. Our service continues then as we join in singing the Reformation Acclamation.
petitions, those are pleas or requests, based on Martin Luther's explanations of the Lord's Prayer, which appear in his small catechism. The title of this service is taken directly from Luther's commentary on the first line of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, what does this mean? Luther responds, here God encourages us to believe that he is truly our Father and we are his children. We therefore are to pray to him with complete confidence, just as dear children speak to their loving Father. It is fitting that we review the model prayer Jesus gave us in Matthew chapter 6 on this Reformation Day, and that we delve into its meaning for us in our relationship with God and others. We begin at the beginning. Our Father who art in heaven. What does Jesus want us to remember when he tells us to address God as our Father in heaven? Jesus teaches us to pray boldly and confidently. Let us pray together in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> what a privilege you grant me, O oh God, that I may call you not by some awesome or frightening name like Master, but as Father. By the same, you assure me that through faith in your dear Son, Jesus Christ, I am truly your child, that you love me as much as you love him. In fact, you love me so much that you gave him up to death, that my sins might be forgiven, and I might truly be your child. The love you have for me is like a parent's love, complete, self-sacrificing, always giving, concerned for my welfare. Help me always to remember that I am your dear child. And since you taught me to pray in the plural, our Father, help me when I pray to remember my brothers and sisters in the faith, those who are as dear to you as I am by your grace. Hallowed be thy name. God's name is holy in itself, Luther teaches us in the Catechism. But we ask in this prayer that he may, we may keep it holy. How is God's name kept holy? God's name is kept holy when his word is sought in his truth and purity. And we as children of God live holy lives according to it. In the first petition, we are praying that God would help us teach and live his word in the way which keeps his name holy. Let us pray together in the name of Jesus. What an honor you have given me, dear Father, by placing your name on me. In my baptism, you declared me to be a child of God, a member of your family through faith in Jesus Christ. You have made my name special in your sight. Since your name is so very special, all by itself, help me not to take your name in vain, but to live up to it and honor it in everything I say. Please don't let anything I do tarnish your reputation. Help me let my light shine before others, so that they may see my good deeds and praise you, my Father in heaven. We sing the first verse of O Worship the King. to us and to many others. 
How does God's kingdom come? God's kingdom comes when our Heavenly Father gives us the Holy Spirit, so that by His grace we believe His Holy Word, and we have God in life now on earth and forever in heaven. Why do we continue to pray for God's kingdom to come, even though Christ already rules in our hearts?
threat, Luther asks in the next petition of the Catechism. His answer begins with everything. Daily bread includes everything needed for this life. And then he goes on to enumerate them. Let us reflect as we pray together in Jesus' name. How generous you are, Heavenly Father. Even when I forget to pray for daily bread, you provide it anyway, and so much more than just bread. Even before I pray, even before I could pray, you have been providing me all my bodily needs, beginning with food and clothing, but then expanding to home and possessions, work and the income I derive from it, my family, my community, the nation in which I live, and there is more. Let me include peace and health, friends and neighbors, and even the weather. Day by day, meal by meal, help me to receive my daily bread with thanksgiving. And especially, Father, I thank you for sending your Son, the bread of life, who gives me everlasting life, and your word, spiritual bread, manna from heaven. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. This petition is probably the heart of the Lord's Prayer. For without the forgiveness of sins, we cease to be children of God. Without forgiving others, we cease to act like children of God. What is an example of trespasses? One example of trespasses is mentioned in Matthew 6, 14 to 15. If you forgive many people their trespasses, we pray that God in his grace would forgive all our sins and lead us to forgive anyone who sins against us. Let us pray together in the name of Jesus. Dear Lord, I ask you to have mercy on me, a sinner. Forgive my open sins and my secret sins. Forgive the sins I know and the sins I do not know. Forgive the sins I did to please myself and the sins I did to please others. Help me to forgive those who sin against me, because I know I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And lead us not into temptation, a most important prayer for our own spiritual welfare, but deliver us from evil, a prayer that can and should include others who are in our family of faith. What is temptation? Temptation is any situation in which we are led by the devil, the world, or our own sinful nature, into false belief, into despair, or into grave or shameful sin. God does not tempt anyone, but has the power to keep temptations away, or to help us overcome temptations. Let us pray together. <laughs> temptations are all around, Heavenly Father. The evil one still lurks, and the world continues to be full of snares and dangers. I am still weak and human, subject to error, despair, and other things of which I am ashamed, or should be. Send your Holy Spirit to stand as my advocate, helping me, leading me every step of the way, my whole life long. Strengthen and preserve my faith, and allow me to recognize that, no matter what, my sins have been paid for and are forgiven. I should never despair. Jesus was tempted in every way, just as I am, yet he was without sin. He took all my sins upon himself. I am forgiven. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. The Lord's Prayer ends where it began, focus on, focus on God, on God's will, on God's rule, on God's reputation, God's good name. We live under God, as the Bible teaches us, and Luther underscores. And so it is, by God's grace, by faith in Jesus alone, as revealed in Scripture alone, the great motto of the Reformation, so it is that we shall live, focused on God as his dear children, forever. Forever and ever, the Lord's Prayer assures us. Let us pray once again together.
What a magnificent father you are! How blessed I am to be your child! For along with all the other undeserved gifts, you have invited me to pray to you and have promised to hear me. You truly mean it when you invite me to approach you as a dear child approaches a dear parent. You promise me that it's true, and so it's all I really need to know. I pray in the name of Jesus, so be it. Amen. We continue with our next hymn, The Lord of Hosts is with us.
there volume too? Uh, died of a sudden heart attack. 
and then she's forced to sell her home and make a bunch of life's changes. And some of you have faced that as well. The real estate agent, Elizabeth, comes over um, and Miss Claire shows her the different rooms, including her favorite room, you know it, the war room. That's uh, not a closet full of clothes or shoes, but there's a light bulb, a chair, a Bible, and a bunch of pieces of paper on the wall. Answered prayers and unanswered prayers. And the conversation continues with Elizabeth, who's not happily married. Um, they're fighting in their marriage. Over what? Well, the usual things. Pride and grief. And Satan's behind it, and Miss Clara knows that. She said, don't fight in marriage, fight for your marriage in prayer. Like Jesus said, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door, pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Instead of, um, and this is how Jesus opens up Matthew chapter 6, the Sermon on the Mount, don't be a hypocrite, whether it's giving offerings or praying in front of others to bring praise to yourself. No. Uh, praise God from whom all blessings flow. A war room, that's an interesting uh, concept. And if you watched any movies as I did uh, this past week, a war room is where the military leaders gather to plan their battle strategy. For Miss Clara, her war room was this little closet where she read her Bible, God speaking to her, and where she uh, prayed to God. Her war room. The Apostle Paul describes the battle. In Ephesians chapter 6, he says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may able to be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Where is your war room? Well, obviously here at church, as we gather with our fellow Christians around God's word and sacraments, maybe it's behind the wheel of the way to or from church. Maybe it's uh, uh, in bed, either when you go to, before you go to sleep or when you get up. Let each day begin with prayer. The hymn writer says, praise and adoration. On the Lord cast every care. He is your salvation. Right. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. May God forgive us for the times where we have taken prayer for granted. Uh, may he lead us, motivated by Christ's love for us, and our sure hope of eternal life in heaven, to regularly pray to God for ourselves and for others. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. God grant that for Jesus' sake. Amen. Our service continues then with uh, uh, the offering, and as we're gathering the offering, please sign our friendship registers and greet each other. <laughs>
request repairs uh, we've listed on page 12 in the bulletin for the sick and others facing trials. And this week we include our Emmanuel members, Gene Crook, who I just learned is coming home after being a week in the hospital. Uh, he's coming home today. And then uh, Paul and Luann Weldon. Uh, we also continue our prayers for George and Jennifer Kellerman, who were called by the Lord at our recent call meeting to serve as the Cala principal and Little Lamb's director teacher for our next school year. Uh, you may remain seated. Let us pray. God of mercy, thank you for the gift of your word and for the message of life and salvation it contains. Thank you for all those you have used throughout the ages to preserve the truth of your word. Lead me to never forget the necessity of keeping your word pure. Where there is error, correct it. Where there is apathy, remove it. Keep your promise that your word will endure throughout all generations. Heavenly Father, you command all who follow you to call upon you in the day of trouble. I do so today on behalf of all who are sick and suffering, trusting in your power and compassion. I praise you for all the healing you grant. I also praise you for the suffering you allow to endure, confident that you will use it to bring those who suffer ever closer to you. Dear Lord, we remember in our prayers, George and Jennifer Kellerman, uh, currently serving at a school in Midland, Michigan, who've been called to serve as our principal and Little Lambs director next school year. Give them a spirit of uh, humility and wisdom as they deliberate where uh, the Lord wants them to continue to serve. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, according to God's good and gracious will. Amen. Our service continues with the Sacrament of Holy Communion Liturgy on page 183 in the hymnal or here on the screen. Please stand as we join in singing the responsive song to preface. sin and redeemed us from its curse and penalty. 
He rescued us from the terrors of death and restored eternal life with you. He conquered our enemies and gained for us the kingdom of grace and glory. Bless us as we receive your Son's body and blood, and lead us to remember his suffering, death, and resurrection. Forgive our sins and fill us with the hope of new life in heaven. Hear our praise and receive our thanks as we worship you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 